what we did was really looking at, in these western states, the feasibility of installing anaerobic digesters. And our focus was really on the state of Colorado, so I should be clear about that. And then what we did is develop a um, online decision support tool that was intended to be a really simple tool that a user could go through to get a preliminary assessment on feasibility. So that's what I'll be talking about today. So um, this one is a 40-minute presentation, and I think the reason for that was because of the demonstration of the web tool that I'm going through. Okay, so I'll start with the introduction to anaerobic digestion and talk a little bit about the feasibility problems in Colorado and the arid western region, and then I'll introduce and demonstrate this online decision tool that's been developed at CSU. Okay, so I don't think I need to give too much background on what anaerobic digestion is. Um, the last presenter talked about that a little bit, and it um, seems like there's a good background in the room, but just really quick, um, there's, you have a high organic carbon waste stream um, that could be anything from animal manure, food waste, or municipal waste as well. It gets introduced to this anaerobic environment. Um, it's converted over into organic acids, and then the organic acids are anaerobically converted to methane. And that methane can then be used, the most common use is a cogeneration. And um, ultimately, we have these products like high, um, with high nutrients and, and low odor. And we get near complete pathogen removal through this process also. Okay, so this methane gas I mentioned, the most common use really is um, the cogeneration so far. And there we're generating electricity and also um, the generator can have hot water run over it and that can be used to heat the digester. Um, several facilities have started to look at, even um, farm facilities have started to look at look, um, using compressed natural gas in vehicles. So that's another potential use of the methane gas is to actually convert vehicles over to be able to use the methane gas after it's purified. Um, can also be purified and supplied to natural gas lines. And really the most simple use, if it's possible, is the use in the boiler. So um, with that use, um, the least cleanup is required. And if there's any nearby industry or on-site use for boilers, then that's a great use for the methane biogas. Okay, so the benefits of anaerobic digestion, we can reduce greenhouse gas emissions, um, the methane release from animal waste is captured, and we also get displacement of fossil fuels by utilizing that methane biogas energy. Um, it offers improved waste treatment from conventional lagoon treatment, so that's a real advantage, and if there can be some economic benefits to the um, agricultural producer, then that's, that's even better. Okay, um, odor control is a big benefit, and um, those who may have attended the field trip that I led earlier this week um, learned that there's a hog farm um, in Wyoming here, and the primary reason that they installed their anaerobic digestion was for odor control, and they've had a lot of success with the odor control from that process. So um, if, if there's complaints from nearby neighbors about odor, anaerobic digesters can be a great fit. And of course, we're always looking toward these renewable sources of energy. Okay, so this photo shows conventional lagoon waste management at a dairy where there's barns and um, manure is probably collected on top of concrete and flows into a lagoon system. So the most simple form of anaerobic digestion simply um, covers up that lagoon and allows for methane collection off of the lagoon system. And that's particularly ideal in warmer climates. Here in the colder climates and the arid western region, these are not as ideal. It, it works for um, diverting greenhouse gas emissions. However, it's not a great solution in terms of trying to actually install infrastructure to collect and use the methane for energy because over the winter months, there's just not enough methane generated. Now, um, this is a picture of some anaerobic digesters that were installed at a farm in Wyoming, at a dairy farm, um, complete mixed reactors. So this is quite a bit different than the picture we just looked at. So the technologies range anywhere from very, very simple covered lagoon systems to these very high-tech systems that are above ground stainless steel. Um, what we looked at at Wyoming is more of a hybrid system where there's a concrete tank and complete mixed reactors that were below ground. 
Okay, so this is a this is a um, map from EPA's AppStar site, which is a great resource for anaerobic digestion. And in parentheses, in um, for each state, is the number of digesters that are installed. So if we look here, we can see some of these states in the eastern region, particularly the northeastern region. Vermont, New York, Pennsylvania have proportionally a pretty high number of digesters installed. Um, Wisconsin, Indiana is a good one as well, and California. So, um, however, we look at our state of Colorado, and again, this, this work was very Colorado-centric, but the, the results are really extendable, I think, to this, this whole region along here where there's the arid west um, kind of climate. So in Colorado, there's one anaerobic digester installed that's at a hog farm. And, and um, these are not anaerobic digesters for reason. These are only for manure processing, OK? So we have a lot of anaerobic digesters at our wastewater treatment facilities. We have them at food processing facilities. But at animal farms, they are not very prevalent in this dry region of the United States. Okay, so let's start to talk about why. Okay, so there's there's several factors that go into site suitability. So um, digester temperature is ideal at about 35 degrees Celsius or 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So locations with cold winters are not ideal. Of course, we can still do it with heating. Um, but more energy has to go back into the system. And there's lots of ways to do that. That's certainly not a showstopper. Um, however, waste quality, the, the conventional technologies that are out there for anaerobic digestion that have been heavily applied in the United States really require a solids content less than 17% solids. And in addition, low inorganic content. So what we get, the last presentation did a great job, I think, of showing how um, we collect um, manure off of these dry lots and there's potential to get soil. Um, any rocks and sand into that material. And with our conventional anaerobic digestion technologies, those, those can create a lot of operational problems. And I'll talk about those in a couple minutes. So the higher organic content, the more energy content. That's, that's obvious. So basically what it comes down to is our sites in the arid west are, are not really heavily suited for conventional technologies, and we really have to look towards some new technologies, I think, to get at this waste. Okay, so this just shows sort of the colder climate in Colorado. This is the average um, annual minimum temperatures, and you can see that here we start to get into those lower ranges that render, like, the covered lagoon type of technology not particularly feasible. Okay, so this slide just summarizes what the recommended solids is in general for these technologies. Now, um, there's several things noted here, and um, your covered lagoon generally just has about less than three percent solids because it's usually a liquid flow into that system. Um, plug flow systems can handle fairly high solids, like eleven to seventeen percent solids. Um, complete mix generally does about five to ten percent solids. Ten percent would be really pretty high for most complete mix kind of systems. Um, up close sludge blankets like to see about three to seven percent total solid. Fixed film reactors very low solids content, less than three percent, or preferably even less than one percent. Now we do have dry digesting down here as well, which can a lot of the technologies that are very available can handle wastes that are greater than forty percent solids. Now I'm just going to go ahead and note that these sort of dry digesting technologies were not included as part of these feasibility tools because they weren't at the time. Um, in this web-based feasibility tool because at the time they just weren't far enough along um, and there weren't any examples of them being applied in the United States for animal manure. So um, when we talk about feasibility, we're really looking at these conventional technologies like covered lagoon, plug flow, and complete mix that are commonly applied uh, on farm. Okay. So what, what impacts solids content in the waste is primarily the waste management practice. Okay, so I'll, so I'll show pictures of all of these later, but generally for cattle manure, these are the practices that are used. Collection by flushing on a concrete pad, and that would be done at a dairy. We talked about feedlots, and um, they're generally on a dry lot for beef cattle. Um, concrete scrape is another one. 
also find uh, dairy facilities. So there, rather than using water to collect the manure, the manure is still on some kind of concrete pad, but it's scraped off with some kind of machinery rather than using water. And then there's, of course, the dry lot. Okay, so this shows a flush collection dairy, and um, this you can get pretty low solid content depending how much water is used here and how much that's recycled, but generally waste that's collected in this way has about between 3 to 5 percent solids. Okay, so we can also do scrape collection on concrete, and um, there we get generally anywhere from 8 to 17 percent solids. What we noted in Colorado is the facility or two that we um, could test with a concrete straight kind of system is that our waste tends to be in this higher range perhaps um, because of the drier climate and um, perhaps the feed and then maybe um, water availability in general. Okay, so the most common collection as noted in the last presentation is manure collection on dry lots and their solid content varies quite a bit because of the, vari the, the variability in storage time, when it's collected, how it's collected, all these kind of things. Um, we have in the middle of summer measured manure at as high as 90% solids collected right off a dry lot, even though as excreted, um, it's, more, it's more close to 20% solids. And the reason for that is it's sitting out baking in the sun for um, a period of a month or whatever. We'll go easily two months without rainfall here. So this, this kind of waste, based on the more conventional technologies, is not quite as suitable. Okay, so this looks at the average annual precipitation in Colorado, and generally we're looking at precipitation on average in the regions where we have animal feeding operations of about um, 12 inches per year, 12 to 14 inches per year generally in most of those areas. Some places even quite a bit less. Okay, now the other problem with dry lot collection, and I do want to be careful here because our last presentation showed that the organic content is substantial in um, feedlot collected waste or dry lot collected waste, and our research is very consistent with that. We've been able to um, also achieve good methane production um, with that kind of manure, but the problem comes more in the operational of these operation of these. Um, really conventional technology. So the dry scrape manure contains usually rocks and sands and up to 80 or 90 percent solids in the arid climate. Okay, so this shows a scraper and the, the collection approaches always vary quite a bit and it's very difficult to really avoid getting soil, sand, and rocks and these things into the material. Okay, so let's talk about these conventional technologies and why they have some problems. So um, basically, this is a schematic of a plug flow reactor, which a lot of the anaerobic digesters that are in, installed on farm in the United States use this kind of technology. And basically, the manure comes in as a plug and travels through the system and exits also as a plug. Um, these are slow, they have slow re re reaction times and they require a high retention time. Um, and they're typically loaded in batches on a farm, like every day you'll have some manure pushed into the system and some manure pushed out. Now, the problem with rocks and sand at this kind of design is that um, as, as, it's, as the manure travels slowly across the length of the reactor, these rocks and sand build up over time. And that buildup can ultimately cause failure of the reactor, it decreases the retention time and the reaction time. And ultimately, your, react your reactor would have to be shut down periodically to remove that kind of material. So complete mixed reactors are um, basically reactors where we have intense mixing and um, a very well-mixed environment, have slightly faster rates um, than, of digestion than the plug flow type of design. Now here, those high solids materials can be just simply difficult and require a lot of energy to move around. And again, rocks and sand are going to be um, a, a problem in terms of settling and with those moving parts. So, so we have problems there. And again, the plug flow and complete mixed reactors are the ones that are very conventionally applied here in the United States. Okay, so basically for technical feasibility of anaerobic digestion, when we 
talk about plug flow, um, complete mix, and covered lagoon type reactors. If we have a flush dairy or concrete um, scrape dairy, the technical feasibility is, is pretty good for installing an anaerobic digester. And that's why we see those kind of facilities appearing in the East Coast, um, the Midwest, where they have a lot of water and generally do either flush or scrape manure. Um, there, you know, that management practice is less common here in the arid west, even in a dairy facility, most of the animals are kept on dry lots. So technical feasibility is poor for dry lot um, collection with given technology. So there's a lot of people out there working on technology to address this kind of waste. Um, my research group is working on that. There's also um, a lot of companies out there that are doing that. Um, there's there's, to our knowledge, there's not um, a large-scale application at a manure facility. So people are starting to look at digestion of dry waste, particularly in food and yard waste collection. So the city of San Jose has installed a dry digester to handle that kind of waste. So some of those technologies may well have application in um, animal manure as well, but have not been demonstrated on a large scale yet. So our last, our last presenter also talked about this concept of co-digestion and um, these, these kind of concepts of combining anaerobic digesters with biodiesel or ethanol plants. And really, there's just a lot of efficiencies to be seen here. And this is really a way to look at making this process, I think, more economic and, and more feasible and, and centralizing these kind of systems. So, this was a planned project in Indiana that, to my knowledge, I can't find anything on it anymore. So I'm assuming that this project didn't go through, but I thought I'd still use it as an example because I think it's a great example. So in this particular case, the hog waste goes to the anaerobic digester. There's a Frito-Lay plant um, that produces a high organic content wastewater that could also go into that digester. Um, there's a soybean processing facility, and the hot soybean oil is transported to a biodiesel plant, but that heat could be used to help heat the digester. And then, of course, the biodiesel plants also um, produce glycine, which is, is useful in the anaerobic digester. And likewise, ethanol facilities produce high organic wastewaters that can be used as a source. So this technology is, I think, great, or this, this concept for this technology is really great, and I think that we all need to be looking toward that. So um, what I want to do now is sort of demonstrate the decision tool that's developed by Colorado State University. And this is the website for that. It's, that website's also available in the proceedings for the conference. So um, you can also access it there. So this is the home page. And um, basically what this does is it has all these tabs up at the top to look at general information about anaerobic digestion. Then there's a feasibility tool that looks at the technical feasibility. Um, we talk about the economic feasibility, also have an economic feasibility tool, um, technology <coughs> provider selection, and we have a whole list of different technology providers, and then also talk about the maintenance that's required. OK, so this outlines kind of divided um, installing an anaerobic digester into all of these steps. And this is work that I did through my extension appointment. And the idea was to really get information out to producers that they um, could, that's coming from um, a reliable source. Okay, so the first step was to learn about anaerobic digestion. And secondly, you need to determine technical feasibility. Like I mentioned earlier, there's some really simple things that a producer can do to have an indication early on whether they would have some issues with technical feasibility or not. And we can always make those technologies work by adding water into the waste. However, um, there's, there's disadvantages in doing that because then now the producer has to deal with a wastewater from their stream as well. So, so they have to really early on to look at technical feasibility and then look at economic feasibility. If technical feasibility looks good, then they need to move on to economic feasibility. Um, select an appropriate technology and then maintain the system. So this decision tool is set up to go through all of those various steps of this process. 
Okay, so um, basically, even within this looks at this starts to look at the fee the technical feasibility assessment that's conducted. So we start with this preliminary feasibility study where we just have them answer some very simple questions. So for example, what is your primary collection method for manure? Um, do you have a nearby source of wastewater that you can access? In this particular case, we have dry lot manure collection, but they have some source of wastewater that they can access. So given conventional technologies, they should proceed with caution. It's possible that anaerobic digestion would work with conventional technology, but it needs to be considered and, and thoroughly evaluated. Okay, so after they go through the step and get this preliminary feasibility assessment, then they move on to um, get an appropriate technology recommendation, which is based on both their input here and some other input, and then a more detailed assessment on feasibility, and then estimated methane production and water requirements for various technologies. Okay, so what this does is basically the technologies that would be viable based on their answers to the first couple of questions. What we do is use a multi-criteria decision analysis tool, and what that does is enables a producer to select what criteria are most important for them on their farm and kind of sorts through that and then provides recommendations on what sort of anaerobic digestion technologies would be most applicable. So don't pay too much attention to all the little words here. The important thing here are these criteria, okay? And so what they do is the user will select a value between one and five where five is the most important for, for, for what they think for their facility. So for example, this particular producer would think that maintenance required is very important. So they're giving that a five. They want to really have a low maintenance kind of system. Um, and less important to them is the treatment efficiency, capital investment in this case. I don't think that's very common actually in reality. But in this case, they're saying, we're willing to put in some capital here, but we just do not want to have to maintain the system very much. Okay, so this goal goes into this multi-criteria decision analysis tool that we developed. And ultimately, so this user is going to click on run, and this arrow is a little crazy, so I think I'm not going to use that. So they'll click on run here, and um, so then they'll get this assessment. So basically what this is going to tell them is based on, so, so for this particular application, um, this 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 was a probably a waste that was um, collected by flush collection, so that all of these technologies could could technically be feasible. So it looks at this plug flow got the highest score, and those are known to be a low maintenance kind of digester. So basically, all of these different criteria are put together and um, how they rank them and some recommendation is provided on what types of technologies might make the most sense. Okay, so now, um, so basically here, then in the end, we can get this feasibility assessment. And this provides some of the final information. Um, in this case, um, feasibility was not that good. I think this is going back to looking more at the dry scrape collection. And um, this is their information about what technology they like best, methane production, um, and what kind of energy is available based on that. So um, down here at the bottom, then it tells them that they should look at the most appropriate technology based on their water requirement. So what this does now is goes and tells them, OK, now here, in, in this case, we're looking at a scenario with a dry lock collection. This tells you um, how many foot cubed acre feet per day or gallons per day of water based on the manure collection approach that was that was determined. How much would you need to add for you know these 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 conventional kind of technologies? And so then the user can go in and weigh, okay, um, if, if there's a technology I can use that doesn't require very much water, then that's probably going to be better, even though maybe it didn't score better in terms of my criteria. Okay, so an important step always also is to look at the economics, and that's probably where producers tend to be most concerned. So we also 
developed an economic decision support tool, which was also based on um, that that was based on several feasibility studies that were done throughout the state of Colorado on the economics of installation of digester systems. And um, a lot of data on the one hog farm um, anaerobic digester that we have installed in the state and also that Wyoming one as well, since we have kind of a similar um, economic and technical feasibility problems here. Okay, so here again, um, there's just a series of questions that the user goes through and answers. So do you meet the definition of a large um, capo? Do you spend an average of $6,000 per month on utilities? Um, do you obtain water from a utility or is it from a well? Um, do you have a lagoon on site? So based on some of the simple information, we can get an idea of is we have the same sort of system set up where here we said, okay, economic feasibility is good. You could also get a yellow box saying, okay, um, use caution about the economics. You need to do some further analysis. Or you could get a red box saying, um, your economics are, are not going to work at this given time unless there's a major change in energy prices or something of the sort. Okay, so um, this also, so now we've gone through basically these first one, two, three, four parts of this um, tool, and now finally we go to the technology provider selection, and we have, do have information available on existing technology providers, and um, a list of questions that the producer should ask of those, and under each of these, so the user can go and click on these various questions and find more information about why they should be asking that question, and what kind of, what, what's the answer that they should be looking for, and, and why that's important. Okay, so um, in summary, anaerobic digestion can be a great waste management tool. Care must be taken to ensure technical and economic feasibility so that we can try to ensure that projects are a success. And um, we are all for trying to look at ways to get at this dry lot collected manure in terms of anaerobic digestion. But um, this, it, like I said, for this particular decision support tool at the time, there weren't really technologies that were um, available that could really address that waste in a way that we could be confident in providing to the producers yet. And so this online tool is available to provide some decision support and really just to provide producers with a way to get some knowledge so that when they talk to technology providers, they know the right questions to ask and they understand what what really drives both technical and economic feasibility of these projects. So, I'd like to acknowledge the funders. A lot of the funding for this decision support tool came from Colorado NRCS, so we do thank them a lot for that. Colorado Culture Experiment Station also helped to support this, and the Colorado Governor's Energy Office. So, um, the tool developed is really a tool to support Colorado producers, I think it's applicable to those in the arid west, but we haven't done enough data collection to really validate its use in states outside of Colorado. Yeah, I guess it's just comment. You seem to be concerned about the water, the management of the water. But, you know, there's at least four technologies that are in Europe and recognized. We have one uh, that recycles the water. You can put the solid separation, you recycle the hydrate, you move on. We have to remove the ammonia in the process so it doesn't exclude the diaper. I think if you plug that type of technology in, you get completely different answers. That's right. So um, I think that and we're, we're working on a technology that recirculates water as well. And I agree. I think that my hope would be that two years from now, this decision tool is completely overhauled because there are applied technologies for manure in the United States that, that use approaches like that. Um, the, the problem is at the time that it was developed is that um, it, there, there weren't a lot of applications of those kind of technologies here in the United States and producers were being told by companies that sold a plug float or a complete mix kind of system that doesn't recirculate the water that, that it would be very viable at their facility and, and they were being sort of misled. So this, the intention was to guide them into the fact that these conventional technologies are not necessarily a great fit. However, there's lots of ways to do this and I think that there will be many technical approaches that are economic that can address this kind of feedlot waste. 
Yeah. So did you get many uh, farms to use this tool to keep track? Of I, I haven't kept track of exactly how many, but I do know I've gotten calls for farms that have used it. And for example, there was a dairy facility actually right near Fort Collins that called me and said, hey, your tool said that my site looks like a great fit. And I went out there and it did. It was actually um, it was a concrete scrape dairy with a lot of cattle. It's in an urban area where they were getting some odor complaints. And so that particular facility is, is looking into what they might be able to do. Um, I haven't tracked exactly how many people used it, but we did have a lot of the producers that we've worked with test it, and they, they liked it. So um, it seems to be out there and having some success.